variety of products for dogs as well. Visit HempHouseChat.com for more information. Be the beat for American Heart Month and learn CPR. We are going to be optimistic this morning and trust that by now that New Year's resolution of managing your money, having a spending plan, living by the rules you establish is going off without a hitch, right? Right. So we're so happy this morning to welcome our good friend Kevin First from First Financial Group, who's here to be uh, Santa Claus in a way and <laughs> pick us up and say, that's okay, you can get there. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you, too. It seems like, you know, we all have these great ideas drinking our coffee in the morning of this is going to be the day. <laughs> and then life happens and something gets us off kilter a little bit, but we got to get back on. We do. You're right. Right. At First Financial, y'all are family operated, have been for all these years. Mm -hmm. um, you know that quite well, yep. but you're a real big believer in really having a goal. I think this is fair to say of you, having a goal and just reminding yourself to get your, to work on it every day. Right, exactly. It's not a quick journey. No, it's not, not at all. It can't be. And so, you know, I've always said or always told you that if you watch a thing, you'll change a thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's true. If you don't watch it, then you don't know where you're at. We were even talking beforehand um, and it was mentioned, well, I don't know what my wife spends or I don't know that somebody had mentioned that in our uh, group. And it was like, you should know what you're spending. You right. should have an eye on it so that you can track it and make adjustments, well, whether, it's, whether it's spending or saving or whatever it might be. Right. So yeah, I know that I think you're a believer in the power of a, if you're going to use an online banking tool, that could be a good way to kind of keep mm -hmm. a track of your money. I'm from the school of balancing your checkbook, but I don't do it anymore. That's really? probably a bad thing. I it's take terrible. the bank's word for it. <laughs> it's terrible. Now you know my sin. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, why is that terrible? Oh, it's terrible because there are so many hackers out there these days. And so one thing is just, I've several times in balancing my bank account, I'll find things that shouldn't be on there. Um, two, three, four hundred dollars. And if you're not watching it, then these guys can get in and they're spending money on your checking account and you don't even know it, especially debit cards. I don't like debit cards at all, except right. for if you go to your bank and withdraw cash. So you like the idea, you think credit cards is a good idea, yes. provided you're disciplined enough to pay it off at the end? Yes, correct. It's way better. And sometimes you get points with them, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is a credit card company is much easier to deal with than a bank trying to get that money back if somebody hacks the card. Okay. A lot of credit cards even watch for you and they'll call you. My, I, have a, I have American Express. There, multiple times they've called me and said, hey, is this you? Um, you're getting gas in New Jersey. We don't think it's you. Hmm. And I'm like, you're right. It's not me. And so they'll cancel the card. The next day, FedEx, they'll send me a new card. So, so if, you know. there's, if there's a bit of advice perhaps to take away from this, and he's got a workshop coming up on the 21st of February to help you with estate planning, which Correct. is a totally different conversation. Um, but if you're thinking, okay, I don't want to be exposed, but gee, my monthly expenses are however many thousands of dollars and I don't have that on my credit card, then go take out cash. Right. Use that right. and then pay right. your bills with the credit card. But, well, not with the credit card, with the debit card. No, I thought you said you wanted to use the credit card. Well, I do, but if you need cash, you use the debit card. Yes, That's, yes, Oh, yes. yeah, yeah, okay, got yes. it, got so it. So use your grocery, use your cash at the grocery store. Correct. Pay your power bill with the credit card. Right. And do right. it that way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sorry, I got into my own personal experience <laughs> for a little you bit. You did. Here. You started. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about this estate planning workshop that you have okay. coming up. Does everybody have an estate Yes, they do. They absolutely do. And so what you're doing with your estate, you know, it's as simple as a beneficiary. That If all you have is life insurance and a 401k, or if you have an annuity or whatever that has a beneficiary to it, that is your estate. And so that money's going to go somewhere if you pass away. And so where's it going to go? And there's little things you can do, like the beneficiary. It's the simplest thing, but the most complicated thing that's out there. Mm -hmm. And people make more mistakes with their beneficiary probably than anything else. How so? Well, so sometimes, well, when, uh, for instance, uh, a 401k, if the 401k, say you're at Fidelity and your company moves it to Vanguard. Okay. Now Vanguard is the custodian. Uh, Vanguard does not have a right to put a beneficiary on there for you. You have to make sure that you, you do it You have to make again. sure that you do it yourself. So a lot of times when we're helping people set up their estate, we notice, hey, you don't have a beneficiary on here. Is there mm -hmm. a reason? 
And no, I have my spouses on there, this is on there. No, nobody's on there. And so you have to make sure that you have a beneficiary on there. Okay, let's go with that example yeah. again. Let's say that you've got, we'll make it Vanguard. Okay. And you have a will, mm -hmm. and your will is establishing that your children, let's say that you, your kids are grown. So your children will be your beneficiary, beneficiaries if your spouse has died. Right. Um, should you, though, on that Vanguard account and whatever other accounts you have, have them listed on there automatically as opposed to it just being in the will where it then has to go through probate? So I would say have them on there individually. It, depending on what type of an account it is, um, you always want the spouse first, obviously. Right. And then the contingent beneficiary or secondary beneficiary, then you can name the kids on there. And you can even use a word that it's per stirpes, mm -hmm. which is the bloodline. So if your children aren't yes. living, it goes to your grandchildren. And so there's a way to do beneficiaries just to get those right. But would that be on the individual monetary accounts, not simply in the will? Correct. Yes, because that speeds it up, right? If it's it would, listed. Well, you, you avoid probate court yes. if they're on there, so okay. that would speed it up, correct. Okay. okay, so at this estate planning event that you have, what should people come prepared with? Just a notebook? Yeah. Because, uh, and at our workshops, nobody, a couple of things. One, we don't, nobody can sign up for anything there. We just, it's educational, the, there's an attorney there. So the attorney's really gonna talk about all the legalese and then we will help people understand some of the traps and issues that come up in estate planning, whether it's a will or a trust, there's issues with both. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we talk about, kind of introduce them to our firm and then um, help them understand uh, the process going forward. Do you find, because you see clients of different ages, mm -hmm. do you find that the people when they're more my age, in their 50s, do we tend to be more impatient in our wealth building strategies than maybe somebody in their 70s? Mm. Is there a generational change there? I don't think so. I think okay. people are about the same. I mean, it's, it's relatively the same. You'd be surprised. People are people, and so it's just Everybody has some of the same issues for the most part. Uh, blended families are unique, so those those are more uh, a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. But your traditional mom, dad, kids, it's pretty straightforward. And are you finding? I know again, each client's unique, yeah. uh, and you assess their risk comfort level and all that at the beginning. But yeah. um, are people still? Do you think feeling a bit nervous about what to do with their money right now? Oh yeah, I think so. I think so. I don't think we're out of the. Out of storm the woods. yet? No, I don't think so. Are think you still a believer in holding on to some cash? Some, some. We deployed some first of the year last last year and first of this year. But I think, I think you still have to have cash, mm -hmm. and be aware of what's going on. But if we could have, you know, I said this last month. I felt like it went up too much, you know, because when it goes up too much, usually people are you overbuy and then mm. you, then people sell off. And so, you know, if we get one and a half you know, or less a month. Yeah. And it's a comfortable year. You end up the year eight to 10%, that really is a decent year, I think, instead of the yeah. ups and downs of last year. And last year felt like we lost 40%, where most people are coming in somewhere between eight and 15 that we're looking at, and it wasn't as bad as I think people thought it was gonna be. So if you're someone sitting here, and let, let's just pretend that you're in your, let's say you're 45 and you've got a house and a mortgage and I'm gonna make up a number two hundred and fifty thousand dollars saved right and you're trying to think about how you're gonna let that money grow over the next 20 years mm -hmm. are you saying it's a realistic estimate to think that that rate of return will be maybe as much as six to eight percent well that's what the market that's what the S&P 500 has done for a okay. hundred years somewhere okay. between six and five percent so how can we or why would we think it's any different right and when you look back in history We've had all the crazy stuff all along. If you lived in that time, there was, it was something else. If you, you know, the 70s, it was something else. The 60s, it was something else. Mm -hmm. Here we are, 2020, and it's just, you know, Well, the way else. my brain worked, that was, a, I wanted to hear your answer, yeah. because when you're in your mid-40s, that's when you're raising your kids. Yeah. And there are a lot of expenses that you have yeah. when you're doing that. So you don't want to be afraid to spend some money to enjoy your life in the moment. Correct. Because you're trying to save all of it for later. Correct. Is that right? Well, that's what you work out in your budget. Right. But you can always save. So you need to have to choose your priorities. So save. So my order is tithe, save, and then spend the rest. 
why not? I mean, if you're saving and you understand what you're saving for, then then have that fun with the rest of the money. I'm going to make you afraid to ever come back, but I've got a time, <laughs> so I'm going to throw you out one here real fast. Okay. Um, before I show people how to get in touch with you, so you've got these new grandbabies, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brand new twins in his <laughs> life. Uh, do you think it's a good idea if you're a grandparent to buy a life insurance policy for grandchildren, or is there if you were going to try to buy something as a money maker? For new grandchildren, what would you suggest? So I like UGMA accounts. They're simple. They're straightforward. Okay. Um, 529s or something else I think that people can do. There's multiple things. I'm not a big life insurance person on grandbabies. Mm -hmm. I think life insurance should have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the purpose of life insurance on a grandbaby is other than, you know, so to answer your question, I like UGMA accounts, a savings account, mm -hmm. a piggy bank, anything mm -hmm. that, that can help them and teach them how to grow money. I had never heard of that either, but I knew somebody once who had that, and then yeah. when the kids hit 18, they would sell it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a way to do it, but why not just put it into a mutual fund or a, right. you know something else, or even a CD, whatever people do, a all lot right. of people do it, so anyway. I promise you, he sat down today, and all we did was talk about those new grandchildren <laughs> and how happy his life is. We had not known anything to discuss this morning, <laughs> except that, that he has that estate planning workshop coming up. That's right. So you can do the same thing with him when you come to see him at his office. Uh, it's February 21st, which is a Tuesday at six o'clock. Next Tuesday, yeah. Uh, Kevin will be there, obviously an attorney will be there. Yep. Uh, other people to help you really learn what you need to know to grow that estate. Uh, it's never too early or too late Correct. to start. GrowKeepLeave.com is their website, 899-8555. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Julia, what are you doing? We have a commercial to film. I'm taking